Grove Grow Baptist Church. How are y'all doing this morning? Hope y'all had a great week this week. This is Easter Sunday. Happy Easter to every one of you as we come together to celebrate the most important uh, thing that happened in human history, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After living a, a born, being born of a virgin, living a sinless life of service, dying a horrible death on the cross, he was risen. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. we got a good service for you this morning. Uh, we're just going to sing a few congregational songs, and then we're going to turn it over to our youth. Uh, they're going to delight us with several songs this morning. Uh, and then after that, we're going to have the kids come up and sing, sing a special for us as well. So I hope you all um, are looking forward to it. And then uh, Chris is going to bring an enlightening message to us all. Uh, so be, be a prayer for him uh, this morning. We have business meeting coming up this Wednesday. Uh, we are having it at 6 o'clock. We are not having Wednesday night service. There's a lot of stuff on the table for that, that one. So we're just going to uh, uh, forgo our Wednesday night service and start the, start the business meeting at 6. So if you want to be a part of that process, please make every effort to be here uh, if you're a member of Oak Grove Baptist Church. <coughs> Got a lot of prayer requests coming up. Uh, Chris is going to touch on uh, when he uh, gets up here here in a few minutes. Uh, but as for now, let's go ahead and sing "Nothing But the Blood," page one thirty-five in the Baptist hymnal, that beige-colored one. Thank you. 
more congregational, then we'll turn it over to the youth. Um, I just want to thank uh, thank the Lord for dying for our sins. If it wasn't for that, none of this would be possible. There would be no hope in the world. Uh, let's sing at the cross. That's where it all happened. Thank you. 
other songs. Now I need for my big kids. If you still have your folder, make sure you bring your folder with you. If you don't still have your folder, I have a few more. Those are the words, yes. Yes.
I'm walking to you. I walk in you. <laughs> you know, uh, our technology is advanced enough that uh, now when you take a picture with your phone, even if it's not going to be real clear, It'll tell you something like uh, the last picture may show up a little blurry or something like that. And I think every picture I got that had Hunter in it <laughs> said the last picture may have been a little blurry. If I had that fellow's energy just for three minutes, right? I mean, I love all our kids, and I'm so excited for all of them, but that little fellow, boy, he just, it's hard to not get excited when he's up there, man. Anyhow, certainly thankful for the opportunity to be in the Lord's house, and I pray and hope that you are as well. I don't expect y'all to be long this morning. Um, we have something to celebrate today. I hope that you do. If you do not, I hope that we say or do something that encourages you and changes you in a way that you do end up having something to celebrate this morning, and that is we serve a risen Savior. If you want to turn with me to Luke chapter 24, maybe give me some feedback on this microphone. Forgive me if I am. Luke, the 24th chapter. You know, the other day I was watching the news and they were talking about the vaccine and the, uh, the significance of the vaccine. And, you know, and, and one of the doctors or one of the analysts on the news was saying, you know, this is one of the most significant accomplishments in the history of mankind. The vaccine, you know, we've, we've, we've effectively squashed this virus. It's just going to take us time to roll it out. And we, we did it in a fashion and a manner we've never done before. It's just one of the most remarkable things that we have, uh, as men and women have ever accomplished. And history is going to look back on this and say, wow, you know, how amazing is it that we, we developed and then administered this vaccine and stopped this virus? And that's true. It's, it's pretty significant, isn't it? It's pretty amazing uh, what we've done with regard to the coronavirus. Uh, there's a really, really a miraculous story in the Bible, and that's the, uh, the, uh, uh, the conception of Jesus Christ, the immaculate conception of him, right? And, and what an amazing story that is. Um, Jesus lived a sinless life. What an amazing story that is. The opportunities that he could have had uh, to sin and to do what we do, but he didn't. And, and what an amazing story that is. Maybe... The most amazing story in your life is the day you were saved. The most amazing story in your life is the day your grandchildren were born and your children were, bo were born. Maybe it was the day that you got married, right? Significant, very significant. But I'm standing here to tell you this morning, there is no more significant event in the history of mankind than the day Jesus walked out of that grave. Amen. All right? There's, there's nothing else. There's, and forgive me for getting emotional, but it's... Boy, it's hard to talk about without getting excited. It's hard to talk about without being humbled by it, right? Is it not coincidental? But how many Easter's do we have where it's just, boy, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? And I imagine it was a beautiful day that morning. Luke chapter 24, starting in the first verse, it says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, 
bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed and thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again? And they remembered his words. Let's pray. Father God, again, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you again for this time that we have to celebrate it's such a, a wonderful and marvelous and glorious event, Lord, the resurrection of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I just pray that we never take for granted what it means for us, Lord, what it allows for us, Lord, the hope that it gives us, Lord. I just pray that if there's somebody here this morning, Lord, that has not turned their life over to you, that's never accepted that free gift, that wonderful and perfect gift, of salvation. I pray that they make the decision to follow you before it's too late. Lord, we know that all our hope is in you. We know that all our hope is not just in the cross, but in the resurrection. Lord, and I just pray that we'll be mindful of that for the next few minutes, Lord, but that we'll be mindful of it at all times, Lord, that that's where our hope lies, Lord, and I just pray that you'll be with me this morning, give me the words you would have me to say, Lord. Lord, just help me to present your word in a way that pleases you, Lord, and that honors you and glorifies you. Lord, we're thankful for the message we've heard this morning through song. Lord, we're thankful for the willingness of our kids and our adults and all those that are willing to participate and are willing to worship and to serve you through song, Lord. And I just thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you're honored and glorified by all that we do here, Lord. But again, most especially, if there's someone here that needs to make the decision turn their life over to you, Lord. May they make the decision before we even uh, get out of their seat. Lord, again, we just thank you and love you for loving us, and we thank you for that wonderful gift of Jesus Christ. Lord, forgive me of all of my sins, Lord, and forgive us for all the ways we fail you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the Bible tells in 1 Peter, the first chapter, the third verse, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy his much mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively or living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now the difference between me and a lost person is hope, right? The difference between those that know the Lord and those that don't know the Lord is hope, and it's hope eternal. It's hope that I have, and I hope that uh, it's hope that you have this morning. And we're going to look for a few minutes uh, as we confirm the statement I made earlier, if you want to turn to Second, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, that's really where our text focus is going to be. I know we read that, uh, that, that, that verse, that passage there that lays the foundation for us. You know, when they went to see him, they went to treat the body, they went to uh, uh, acknowledge him still being in the grave, he wasn't there. He wasn't there, and the angels, the messengers there were like, why are you shocked? He told you he wasn't going to be here, right? He told you that when you came back, he wasn't going to be here. The disciples, the Bible tells us in John, ran to look at that tomb, to look at that grave area. And guess what? He wasn't there. Why? Because he said he wasn't going to be there. The God that saved my soul is the God that wasn't in the grave that morning. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Let's look for a few minutes. Confirmation of the hope we have in the resurrection. I'm telling you, folks, everything else is great. Even him dying on the cross would have been insignificant or valueless if he had, been, if he had not raised again that third day. He would just be a man in a grave, wouldn't he? He would be a man in a grave, but he's not a man in a grave. He's our Lord and Savior. He's our salvation. He is our hope, a lively hope. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 12. It says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now notice it doesn't say how some of you is how say some of you that Jesus isn't raised, but there was clearly uh, a teaching around at that time that there was no resurrection of the dead. The Bible tells us that the Sadducees 
which were a sect of religious people, absolutely believed in no resurrection. We know according to the book of Acts that in Athens it was being taught that there was no resurrection. And so maybe there's a, 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 a connection there because of how close Corinth was to Athens. Maybe that's why it was being taught in this church and in this area. But all we know for sure is that there was being taught, at least by some of them, that there was no resurrection of the dead. But then in verse 13 it says, But if there be no resurrection of, dead, of the dead, then is Christ not risen. If there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. Understand, first of all, that Calvin has a lot to say too. Uh, but understand that these, these clauses here, these if statements here, are, are, are Paul's kind of a way of arguing, if you will. In other words, he'll state something that, he's, that is not true. All right? If there's no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And he'll state it and he'll say in such a way that it'll be like, you know, you say there's no resurrection of the dead. Let's assume that's true, okay? For the sake of argument, let's assume that there's no resurrection of the dead. Well, if there's no resurrection of the dead, guess what? There's no resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? We don't know if that was contended or not, but we do know this. They were arguing that there was no resurrection of the dead, and Paul says, okay, let's assume that that's true. And if it's true, then there's no resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, all my hope is in Jesus, Right? All my hope is in Jesus. All your hope is in Jesus. Verse 14 then says, And if Christ be not risen, now again, it's a statement but that that's not true, but Paul's argument pretty much is, let's assume that it is. Right? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith also vain. Your faith is also vain. So if Jesus is not risen, and let's assume that's true, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. All of my hope is in Jesus. Verse 15, yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. In other words, if it's true that Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, Paul, who spent three years with Jesus after his resurrection, is now a false teacher. He's a false prophet. He's a false preacher. Everything that he said as a witness to God is now a lie. All these other apostles and all these other folks that got to see, the Bible says upwards of 500 people at one point saw that Jesus was alive. All these witnesses of God, because Jesus didn't rise, are now false witnesses. If he be not risen, and let's assume that is, that's true, then verse 15 says, we are found false witnesses of God. Why? Because we've testified of God that he raised up Christ. We've testified of him that he raised up Christ. Whom he raised not up, if so be, that the dead don't rise. Dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then not Christ, then is not Christ raised. Again, if the dead rise not, let's assume that that's true. Jesus is still in the ground. Verse 17, if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Again, you're, I'm not, not going to keep saying it. But again, these are statements that Paul knows to be obviously false. But for the sake of argument, let's say that you're true. Right? And so he says, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. And guess what? And this is how we know the significance of what Jesus Christ did for us. Ye are yet in your sins. Ye are yet in your sins. If we don't have Jesus, and if Jesus didn't die on the cross, and if Jesus wasn't buried, and Jesus didn't raise again that third day, we have no hope. We have no hope. It all begins and ends with that resurrection. Everybody on earth has died, right? A lot of people on earth have been buried. But Jesus Christ raised himself from the dead through God, or God raised him through, you know, he raised himself through God. But the thing about it is, Jesus overcame death. He overcame sin. He overcame the grave. He was victorious over death, right? And because of that, we can be victorious over death. And so to assume at that point, which is what they were doing, that there was no resurrection of the dead, meant that there was no resurrection of Jesus. And all our hope is in that. All of our hope is in that. The difference between us and lost people is hope. And we have hope because of what he did. He is victorious. 
Ye are yet in your sins. Everything we've ever believed, right? This is what he's saying. Everything you've ever believed, everything you've ever been taught, everything you've ever practiced is false if indeed Jesus is still in the grave. Verse 18, I like the way he puts this. Actually, I want to read, uh, well, actually, yeah, read verse 18 first. It says, Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. There's a reason the Bible uses the word sleep or asleep or slumber because it's temporary. For a Christian, that sleep is temporary. Death is not eternal, right? It's momentary. And Paul teaches that numerous times in the letters that he writes. And so he even almost kind of backhandedly says, all these people that we've preached and that we've taught to be asleep in Christ to be momentarily uh, uh, out because they're set to be resurrected at some point. Well, now they're, they're, they're eternally perished, right? If they, which, then they also, which are falling asleep in Christ, are perished. John uh, chapter 11 tells us when uh, Jesus goes to see Mary and Martha after Lazarus has died, Jesus said unto her, I'm the resurrection and the life. <coughs> He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this. Very simple, very logical argument Paul is making here, right? Very logical argument. If there's no resurrection of Jesus, then your faith is in vain, preaching is in vain, we're false witnesses of God, and all those people that died with hope have no hope. All those Old Testament saints... All the people that have died up to this point. All those that the Stephen even, you know, the others that we see martyred in the New Testament that have died at this point with hope now have no hope because you're telling me Jesus Christ is not raised. Verse 19, this is such a great verse. He says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. <laughs> miserable there probably translates just as well pitiable. You should feel sorry for us. Why? Because we've hung our hat on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Again, you go back even just a few verses. Verse 8, it says, And last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. So everything that Paul believed hinged on the resurrected Lord, right? The resurrected Savior. Everything he believed on in, everything that he taught, everything that he showed by example, all of that hinged on that. Look at the persecution Paul faced. Imagine going through life, getting beaten and stoned, and running for most of your uh, converted life because the Jews are after you, and then come to find out it's not real. Right? Come to find out that we are more than, you know what? We're worse. We're worse off than somebody that doesn't know the Lord in the first place. Somebody that doesn't know the Lord in the first place doesn't lose anything. But if we have Jesus and then we lose Jesus, we're of all men most miserable. Paul makes a pretty uh, plain statement there, right? If in this life only, if this is the best it is, if this is the best we've got, if our acknowledgement of Christ here is as far as it goes, we're of all men most miserable. But then notice what he says, his counterpoint in verse 20. Because Paul, again, this was for the sake of argument. Paul liked to do the for the sake of argument thing. Right? You can see it in, in numerous passages. For the sake of argument, let's say that this is true. But I'm going to tell you it's not. I'm going to tell you it's not. And then whether it's the church of Corinth, whether it's the church of Galatia, we see this quite frequently. You, you say this is true or you think this is true. Well, let's say for the sake of argument it is, but I'm going to tell you it's not. I know y'all, and I know y'all all want to know this, that y'all know that we serve a risen Savior, right? Amen. Amen is exactly right. <laughs> and what verse 20 says, but now is Christ risen from the dead. See, Paul doesn't give it any more credence, any more, uh, uh, he doesn't support that argument anymore. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. He is the acceptable offering. And because of that, the rest of the offering, which is us, is now available. First fruit, some people look at it as the first. You say, well, but he raised Lazarus and he raised us. But guess what? When it comes to God, all that matters is that Jesus was resurrected first, right? He came first, and so therefore we can have victory over death. Now is Christ risen. Verse 21 tells us, For since by man 
became death, as explained in Romans 5, 12, which says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. If you are alive, you are a sinner. And if you are a sinner, you need a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ. It says in verse 21, For since by man came death, by man also, by man Adam, and then by man also, Jesus Christ, the man in the flesh, came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even in Christ, even so in Christ, shall all be made alive. Read that again. For as in Adam all die, because Adam brought sin into the world <coughs> and condemned us all to death because of sin. Hold on. Paul is also given to me too. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. All my hope is in Jesus. All my hope is in Jesus. And I pray that your hope is in Jesus Christ. You know, when we sit here in church on Easter Sunday, sometimes I think we sit here and it's just another day. Or sometimes we sit here and it's an important day because we've got the flowers and it's an important day because we have an egg hunter. It's an important day because we're going to go see family. We're going to go see family. Y'all going to go see family, right? It's Easter. It's a big deal. Well, guess what? You know, I've told you all this before. When we say Jesus is the reason for the season, I think that's a, a, a mistake because Jesus is just the reason, right? He's not the reason for the season. He's the reason. Jesus is the reason that I'm here, that you're here, and that we're all here. Jesus is the reason that we have hope eternal. Jesus is the reason, the hope that we have because of what he did for us, not in dying on the cross for us, not in our leading captivity captive and going through the process he did through for three days. The reason he's the reason and the hope is because of what he was able to overcome, which was death in the grave. He was able to overcome something that none of us ever could on our own. But he loves us so much that he died for us. And he loves us so much that he was, didn't just die for us. He was victorious for us. All my hope was in Jesus. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 tells us starting in verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. <laughs> For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, which I hope you do, and I hope you don't just believe it because you've always heard it or because you've watched a movie about it. I hope you believe it because it's in here. <laughs> if you're sitting here this morning and it's not in here, if you're sitting here this morning and you don't understand why we're celebrating such a wonderful and beautiful and awesome day, right? then I pray and hope that you come to know the Lord as your Savior because you don't have him. You don't have him, but you can you can have it. All it takes is accepting who he is, which is your Savior, someone that died for you, that paid the price for you, that paid the penalty for your sins because you were inadequate. Guess what? If I die today, 100,000 years from now, you're still going to probably find my body unless the Lord returns. You're going to find my body in a grave, right? But we can dig up the entire Middle East and all the world, and we're never going to find his body. Why? Because he's not there. He's not there. And we have that to celebrate. Anyway, it says again in verse 14 of 1 Thessalonians 4, If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You can't meet a Lord that's still in the ground, right? You just can't. So we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And why did Paul tell us that? Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What great words, right? It's hard to talk about the resurrection and not smile. It's hard to talk about the resurrection and not get a little emotional. You know why I get emotional? Because about Wednesday or Thursday of the, uh, of the resurrection week, of the passion week, whatever you want to call it, something will happen and it will make me stop for a minute and remind me of what Jesus was doing for me several thousand years ago. And what he was doing for me at that time is he was dying on the cross for me. 
He was dying on the cross for me. And it's a very humbling. Uh, it's amazing how many times on a Wednesday or a Thursday, because I don't believe. Anyway, I'm not going to get into Good Friday, but let's put it this way. I don't believe that he was crucified that day. I'll just say that. But anyway, but the thing about it is we do know that he was crucified before he was resurrected, right? And so invariably something will happen or the day will be somber or the day will be sad and it will just strike me all of a sudden, wait, and I go all the way around the world at this time of day and what was Jesus doing for me? He was dying for me. But then we get up on Sunday morning, it sure is an exciting day because as we celebrate, right? We don't know this was the exact anniversary of his resurrection, but we celebrate that that day he did get up, right? That day when they went to that grave, he wasn't there. That day when they went to, to, to see him and to service the body and to do whatever they needed to do, he wasn't there. The stone was rolled away, the Bible tells us, and they were able to celebrate a victorious Lord and Savior. It's, it's hard not to get excited, isn't it? It's hard not to get excited about that. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. All my hope is in Jesus. That song's been going through my head, so I'd like to share the chorus with you this morning. A song by Crowder. It says, All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday or my yesterday is gone. Yes, all my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. The question is, have you been washed by the blood of the Lamb? You have because Jesus has died for you already. He's died for every single person that ever has been and ever will be. The question is, have you accepted him as your personal Savior? Have you turned your life over to him? Do you sit here this morning celebrating a risen Savior? Or you do, sit, do you sit here this morning not waiting till you can get to fellowship this afternoon with your family? Because all that's secondary. Nothing we will ever do in this life, nothing we will ever see in this life will compare to a resurrected Lord. Nothing, nothing will ever compare to that. Because without that, there's no hope. And all my hope is in Jesus. My prayer is this morning that you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. That you're sitting here this morning confident and happy and smiling because you also are celebrating a risen Savior. Let's assume that he's risen. No, we don't have to assume that. We know that that's true. The Bible records it over and over again. We know that he's a risen Savior. And that right now he sits at the right hand of the Father, sitting and making intercession for us. But guess what? He's going to come back for us. We have that to look forward to. Whether we're dead or whether we're alive, he's coming back. And he's going to reign eternally as King of kings and Lord of lords. I would have it no other way than to have my Savior be right here and be way down here. Right? And my prayer is that you know Jesus Christ. If you don't, Turn your life over to him today. If he's burdening you, if the Holy Spirit's burdening you or convicting you this morning, if you've got a decision to make, make that decision. I pray and hope that you know the Lord and your Savior. I pray every one of you I'm going to see in heaven. But I don't know that. I don't know that. So my prayer is that you make that decision if God's leading you to make that decision. But then if you have made that decision, understand that celebrating the resurrection isn't something we should do just on Easter. Every day, every day we should be reminded of the hope that we have. Just the, the times I've heard this morning in Sunday school and in song service, people using the word hope. We need to be mindful of that at all times, that we have hope because we have him. Do you have him this morning? Let's stand right now and verse of invitation for a musician to come forward. I don't have much, but I have hope. Right? And you may not have much, but if you have Jesus, you have hope. And that's all you need to get into heaven is Jesus Christ and that hope that we have through him. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you're not sure you have hope. If God's dealing with you, respond to that. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and the world's gotten in your way and you've forgotten how much that hope means to you. You've gotten distracted by the world or your job or your lives or your family or whatever. Let's take this moment to reflect on what Jesus did for us. Not just in dying for us, just not uh, in, in, in paying the price for us and taking the beatings and, and going through the abuse and the mockery. Let's be mindful of that third day. He walked out. Nothing was going to stop him. And nothing did. And because of that, we have eternal hope and eternal security. In Jesus Christ, our Savior, as we sing this morning.
Whatever God's leading you to do, I encourage you to respond. Considerations, announcements, anything you'd like to mention before we close this morning? Yes, sir. One thing we've been <coughs> forgetting because of what all is going on, men's fishing trip is this coming week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Colt Byer on Lake Duray. Oh, wow. <laughs> all right, yeah, I think uh, I didn't know that. <coughs> I didn't figure. <laughs> <laughs> you see me at Walmart right now buying something. <laughs> so, yeah, now, y'all know me. I lose lures, right? And I'd have to take the baby with me, and I'd probably lose the bait. <laughs> but, anyway, especially if we came down to a fish or the baby, I'd be like, just hold it. Anyway, so something like that. <laughs> anyway, all right, well, all right, so I guess we're having a fishing trip, it sounds like, this this week. Uh, for yeah, Thursday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday morning. Okay. All right, any other announcements, other considerations? Maybe other prayer requests that you thought of since we started our service? Well, again, it's good to see all of y'all. Certainly thankful for all those that are visiting with us. I pray and hope you got something out of the message this morning, out of the service this morning. And uh, most importantly, I pray that we honor and glorify God by all that we do here, and I'm confident that we do. If there's no other considerations, no other announcements, again, just always keep me and my family in your prayers, keep each other.